The story starts with Hiraku. He was called to a god, because in his previous life he was betrayed by everyone, and he also was ill since 39 years. After his death the god thought he had a sad life. As a result the god of the worlds wanted to give Hiraku a second life, he wanted to give him a healthy body in his next lives, and Hiraku gets a wish granted as a bonus. Hiraku wanted to be a farmer in his next life, because he always watched shows about farmer in the hospital. Then the god of the worlds, asked the god of agriculture, if Hiraku would be allowed to farm in his next life. Hiraku got permission, and the god granted his wish to have a healthy body, and to farm in a place where no humans are around. In addition, the god gave him the power of the almighty farming tool. Then he started his new life as a farmer, and he first looked around his surroundings. After that, he tested the power of the almighty farming tool, and he could change it into any object and shape that he wanted. The almighty farming tool had a passive skill that he never got tired by using it. Then Hiraku tried to find water, and he dug into the ground until he found it. Hikaru quickly figured out how to use his newfound power and chop wood to build himself a small house. Unfortunately, Hiraku didn't manage to build a house in time, and he also wanted to make a fire before night fell on, but it was too late before he realized it. He then dug a hole in a tree and carved wooden dishes for himself. The next day he tested the water, and after that he started to make a fire. As he was chopping wood again, a monster attacked him, and he defeated it immediately, so he had rabbit meat for lunch. After that, Hiraku created a toilet, and he realized he needed more privacy, so he built a room around to the toilet. In the afternoon, Hiraku wanted to grow vegetables, and he dug the ground, realizing that he didn't have any seeds for fruit or vegetables. Hiraku then went to sleep, and when he woke up, he suddenly saw plants growing in his fields. He found out that he didn't need seeds and the plants grow by themselves. He didn't know what kind of plants to expect, but he was happy that something is growing. However, he decided to protect his fields from wild animals, and he built a shelter for them. Meanwhile, wild rabbits often tried to eat his plants, and he defeated them all. In the following days, he lived on rabbit meat and managed to build a small hut. Several days passed like this, and suddenly two huge dogs appeared. They looked injured. Hiraku took care of the two dogs and gave them food. He fed them his hunted meat, because short time before, he killed a wild boar that was trying to break through his wall. Then Hiraku noticed that one of the dogs is pregnant. Hiraku wanted to help her, and he brought the two dogs to his little hut. Then he built a fire in front of the hut to keep the dogs warm, and then he went to sleep. The next day, Hiraku was happy to see the puppies were born healthy, and he fed the two dogs with meat. Then several days passed, and Hiraku built a new house, and he lived with the dogs. In addition, the plants that grew on the field turned into delicious tomatoes. Hiraku also named his dogs with Yuki and Kuro. They helped him a lot with guarding the vegetable fields and hunting the meat. That was the starting point of Hiraku's peaceful life as a farmer in another world. Over the next few days, Hiraku figured out how to grow different types of vegetables, because he only had to imagine the type of vegetable he wanted to grow. The plants that he wanted appeared every time, and they were always grew very quickly. Unfortunately, Hiraku still had difficulties with the cultivation and had to learn a lot as a farmer. He also created statues to honor the gods, who gave him his new life. Then Hiraku made a stew, and he remarked that he needed spices, since his food is very tasteless. In the days that followed, he grew fruits and often played with his dogs. He noted that they evolved over time. His dogs were very helpful, because with their help, he could easily explore the forest, and he found a river. Thereupon, Hiraku decided to build a water supply to his settlement, and he immediately started the construction work. When he built a water supply, he increased his arable land to continue growing crops. Then many days passed, and slowly it got colder. Hikaru wanted to prepare for the winter, but the fur of the wild animals stank that he couldn't use it to keep himself warm. One day, a giant spider appeared. He greeted Hiraku, and showed his awesome skills to create clothes. The spider could make clothes, and Hiraku accepted it into his settlement. After that, the giant spider lived with Hiraku, and he made clothes and other great things that he wanted, so his spider got the name Zabuton. Then it was winter, and Hiraku was perfectly prepared for the cold days. But during the winter, he realized that he felt lonely without a person to talk to. When it was spring, the puppies of his dogs were grown, and they went into the forest. They reappeared a few days later, and they had found partners. In addition, there was another surprise in the spring, because Zabuton showed up with children even after winter. However, Hiraku increased his arable fields, as he knew that he had to produce more food. While cultivating the fields, Hiraku was signaled an alarm by his pets, and his dog Kuro led him into the forest. 
Hiraku spotted a little girl, and his dogs threatened her. Hiraku stopped the dogs and went to give her his jacket, but the girl bit Hiraku on his neck. She grew through his blood, and she thanked him, but one of his dogs reacted and attacked her again. They thought the girl attacked Hiraku. As a result, she shrank back into a little girl. Then the little girl apologized to Hiraku, and he understood that she is harmless. This is how Hiraku learned that she was fighting his dogs, and she was using up all her strength in the fight. Hiraku offered her to drink his blood so she could hold her true form. Then she grew up again, and he showed her his settlement and the types of vegetables he grew. The vampire girl named Lu was impressed by his vegetables since she saw them for the first time. He spent the whole day with her to showing his plants, and in the evening he learned that she is a vampire who was hunted by nobles. For this reason, she fled into the forest, and Hiraku learned that his dogs and spiders are strong wild beasts. After that, Lu asked if she could stay longer at his settlement to do research on his plants. Hiraku was pleased at her words, and he asked her if Lu would like to live with him forever, as he was very lonely. Lu was unsure at first, as there were dangerous people chasing them, and she didn't want to put Hiraku in danger. So Hiraku changed her mind, and Lu took his question as a proposal. She asked if he really wanted her as a wife. When Hiraku understood the misunderstanding, he didn't hesitate, and asked her to be his wife again, and she accepted his proposal, and decided to live with him forever. The next day, Hiraku was tending his crops, and Lu showed up, wanting to see more of his crops. Lu also asked if he could sow medicinal herbs in the fields. So Hiraku lived with his new wife Lu, and his settlement slowly grew into a village. Since Lu has been living with Hiraku, his life has become much better, because Lu was able to create light by using magic. Also, Hiraku learned from Lu where he can get salt to pimp up his meals. After that, Hiraku wanted to show the new plants he had grown, and he drank tea with her. Suddenly the alarm went off, and Hiraku looked into the forest. Arriving in the forest, an angel was attacked by his pets and tied up. Hiraku freed her and the woman, thanked him, and used her healing powers to heal her injuries. Then Lu tried to sneak away secretly because the angel wanted to catch her. However, the angel were invited to Hiraku's house and she learned that he is Lu's husband. She was surprised by the news, so Tia introduced herself and explained that she is an angel. Hiraku also learned that Lu had a bounty on her head because she always causes problems when she is researching medicines and concoctions. The reason was, she always causes explosions that made a lot of property damage. Lu responded to her statement that it wasn't on purpose, and she told Hiraku that she fled into the forest because Tia was chasing after her. Thereafter, Lu asked if Tia would like to live with them in Hiraku's settlement. Lu then showed her the village fields, and when she introduced Tia, the spider Zabuton, she fainted with fear. When Tia regained consciousness, she was shown the types of vegetables that Hiraku had planted. Hiraku seasoned his salad with salt, and Tia tasted his salad. They then harvested vegetables until the evening, and Hiraku was jealous of the two for being able to purify themselves with magic. In the evening, Tia was asked if she enjoyed the day, and then Lu decided that Tia should live with them in the village. In the following days, they harvested delicious vegetables and fruits, and Tia helped Hiraku expand the village. A few days later, they walked past the doghouse, and Hiraku noticed that his dogs gave birth to new puppies. So the dog family of Yuki and Kuro grew again. Hiraku wanted to give them more space, and planned to build a bigger doghouse for them. He also wanted to think about names for the puppies. After that, some of Zabuton's children said goodbye to Hiraku. Later, Tia also wanted to leave the village for a while. She said that she wanted to do some errands outside of the village. A few days later, Tia reappeared with a group of high elves, and they introduced themselves, all using the family name Leah. Tia then explained to him that their village was wiped out in the war, and they have had no home since then. Hiraku invited the high elves to his village, because he saw no problem with them living in his village. After that, the elves were introduced to the giant spider Zabuton and the inferno wolves by Hiraku. The high elves all passed out from their fear, because Hiraku's pets are actually dangerous monsters. After that they built houses and toilets. The high elves were impressed by Hiraku's power to cut down a tree, because he had enormous power. Ten days later, the house of the elves was finished, and Hiraku was depressed, as the house of the elves was much nicer than his little hut. After that, they looked at the new house, and Hiraku hoped that the high elves would feel comfortable in his village. In the days that followed, the elves settled in, and Hiraku realized that his knowledge of elves from his previous life is all wrong. He realized that they're not vegetarians, and they have blacksmith skills. In the days that followed, 
Hiraku built a furnace, and the elves made cooking pots. Hiraku was happy with the cooking pots that their elves could make. Afterwards, the elves thanked him and said that they are happy to have found a new home and can now focus on making babies. Hiraku remarked that they don't know anything about making babies, but Hiraku wasn't ready to tell the innocent elves how babies are born. In the days that followed, they lived together, and Hiraku baked bread, which he let everyone try. When Hiraku wanted to plant more fields for new plants, he realized that he didn't know who owned the piece of land he founded his village on. Lu told him that technically it belongs to the demon lord, but she said he didn't need to worry as he built everything himself on the land. So he is now the owner of the piece of land. In the evening the women talked among themselves, and they admired Hiraku, that he could grow such delicious vegetables, and also that he could tame such strong monsters as the Inferno Wolf and Demon Spiders. In the days that followed, Zabuton caught a giant queen bee. He wanted Hiraku to keep the queen bee as a pet. However, Hiraku built a small house as a bee home for the queen bee, and he looked forward to the honey his bees would produce. After that, Hiraku wanted to build a water reservoir, and he and an elf figured out how to transport the water from the river to the village. The next step was, Hiraku created a waterway with the excavated earth, Followed they always had fresh water in the village. The elves were very diligent and helped Hiraku with the construction work. The water supply to his village was quickly completed with the high elves' help, and Hiraku was able to water his fruit and vegetables in his village. When building his water supply, he also find fresh fish, they were washed up, and he decided to grill them. The others in the village were surprised that Hiraku cooked them into one dish, because the fish are very dangerous, and no one can imagine that they taste good. When Hiraku's fish dish was cooked, nobody wanted to try it because they were scared. Hiraku tasted it first, and it was delicious. Thereafter his wife Lu and his friend Tia also liked his fish dish, following which the elves also wanted to try his fish. In the days that followed, Hiraku wanted to plant rice. He built a paddy field, and everyone was surprised that he filled his field with water. They thought he wanted to raise fish, but Hiraku taught them how to plant rice in the field. When the rice was ready to be harvested, the Leia elves helped him to harvest. After that, Hiraku dried his rice followed the rice was finished processing, and Hiraku also cooked the rice in a pot. Then Hiraku made rice balls, and the girls were surprised how delicious it tasted. Everyone loved Hiraku's rice balls, so there was nothing left for him. In the days that followed, Hiraku built a bathhouse and tried to find a way to dispose of the sewage. So he changed the water pipe, and Tia showed Hiraku cute slimes that were harmless, and they can clean the dirt. Followed he used them as a filter to recycle their water. While Hiraku was chopping wood, he was also trying to grow edible mushrooms. Then everything was prepared for his bathhouse, and Hiraku had to show the girls how to behave in the bathhouse. When Hiraku was in the tub, all the women appeared in with them in the tub, and Hiraku showed his shy side. He couldn't relax in the presence of the pretty women. The next morning, Hiraku's edible mushrooms grew, and his inferno wolves found five more elves. Their names all started with La and they were also lucky to live in Hiraku's village. Then we see the former life of Kuro as he lived without his master Hiraku. Kuro lived alone in the dangerous forest, and he had never lost a fight until he met Yuki. She instantly defeated him, and he fell in love with her. However, one day she got pregnant, and Kuro was looking forward to his puppies, but they were attacked by a very strong bear. Kuro and his wife were injured, and didn't have enough strength to hunt their own food. Then they met Hiraku. First they thought Hiraku was a weak human, but Hiraku gave them food, and they saw his strength by fighting a boar. That's how life with Hiraku began, and shortly after, Kuro's children were born. Hiraku took care of his puppies, and more and more powerful women appeared in his village, whom he led. Kuro knew that Hiraku has almighty Riz power, but he wondered if Hiraku knows that Kuro is a dangerous inferno wolf and not a dog. Despite Hiraku not knowing his true identity, Kuro enjoyed spending time with Hiraku. After that, Hiraku was building a new house, and he couldn't believe how much space the house had. Also, Hiraku discovered that he had a great view of his village's giant tree in his new home. He was happy about the construction of the high elves, and he also put statues of Kuro and Yuki outside of his new home. The next day, Hiraku wanted to cook curry, and he still needed spices, so he showed Lu and Tia new plants that were all ready to be harvested. With his almighty farming tool, he plant delicious spices that went very well with his dishes. Followed Hiraku showed the two girls different types of vegetables, and they dried them with their magic to turn them into spices. When Hiraku showed his dogs coriander, they ran away as they couldn't stand the smell. Lu and Tia got interested in them, 
that Inferno Wolves don't like coriander. After that, Hiraku harvested black pepper and cayenne pepper. Hiraku then had all the spices for his curry, and the elf Leah wanted to help him to cook. Then Hiraku and Leah started to prepare everything. Leah learned a lot from cooking with Hiraku. Followed Hiraku showed her the steps of cooking a curry meal. He attracted many spectators with the delicious smell of his curry. When they almost finished making the curry, Hiraku remarked that he has to cook a bread named naan to go with the curry. Then Hiraku prepared dough, and Leah rolled out the dough, while more and more people appeared, and Hiraku watched while cooking. When Hiraku's naan bread was finished baking, Hiraku served the curry to all of his friends, and he showed him how to eat the dish. He dipped his bread in the sauce, and when everyone tried it, they were amazed at how delicious the curry tasted. All the women loved his curry, and they immediately went for more, so the dish was quickly eaten, and Hiraku was happy about their beautiful smiles. In the days that followed, Hiraku prepared for the winter, gathering enough firewood and collecting blankets from Zabuton. Meanwhile, Tia and Lu used magic to preserve meat for the winter, since the Inferno Wolves aren't able to hunt in the snow. Then Hiraku tried to preserve vegetables, becoming jealous of the others, since he can't use magic. In the evening, Lu explained to him that humans needs magic in the body to cast spells. Hiraku told his wife Lu how much he would like to do magic, but Lu encouraged him that he didn't need it, because he was special even without magic. When winter fell on, Hiraku spent a lot of time playing games. He made funny games by himself, and explained to his friends how the rules of the game worked. When Lu was playing with Tia and Lu almost lost, Hiraku remarked that Lu hates losing, because she knocked over the entire board. Tia couldn't accept it, and used her magic against Lu, and she set the board back up. Then he watched the elves and Hiraku remarked that his dogs are extremely smart, which were very good at chess. After that, Lu wanted to play against Kuro, and she lost. Later they played Mahjong, and Hiraku thought he was going to win against Kuro, but his dog once again beat everyone in the game. In the days that followed, Hiraku created more games, as a result they played bowling. Hiraku showed his skills to everyone, but the women all played better than him. So Hiraku spent the winter playing games and cooking delicious food with his friends. Winter passed quickly, and when spring fell on, Hiraku wanted to wake up his giant spider Zabaton from his hibernation. Suddenly a wyvern flew to them, and Hiraku was alerted by Zabaton that danger was coming. The wyvern demonstrated his tremendous strength, and he attacked Hiraku's village with a breath of fire. Hiraku wanted to protect everyone, and he tried to shape a spear with his almighty farming tool. He managed to create a strong spear, and he immediately attacked the wyvern. The wyvern countered and had a strong barrier followed Hiraku was able to injure the wyvern on his wing, and he immediately attacked again, so he defeated the strong wyvern. After that, Hiraku sought out the wyvern in the forest, and Lu told him that a dragon appears relatively rarely. The reason is wyverns are rare creatures, Hiraku feared that someone might have sent the wyvern to attack them. The others assumed that he was bound to show up alone, and Hiraku decided to eat the wyvern. As a result, Hiraku prepared a delicious wyvern steak, with many delicious side dishes. Everyone thought Hiraku's dish was delicious, and they were happy about tasting the rare meat. During the meal, Lu asked Tia if she could manage to deflect Hiraku's spear attack, but the couldn't, because Hiram is overpowered. Then we see the demon general Bezel in the demon palace, he reported to the other demon generals that a wyvern was defeated by unknown persons. Meanwhile, the dragon named Drime also saw the attack from his cave, and his assistant said that even Drime would die by Hiraku's attack. The next morning, Hiraku wanted to make alcohol, and the elves were delighted. They then harvested grapes, and Hiraku built a device to process the grapes. The girls should crush the grapes, and meanwhile Hiraku will take care of the barrels. So the girls started to walk on the grapes, but Tia stumbled, and they tried to stomp the grapes in the same rhythm. The elves started singing, and everyone had a lot of fun making wine, so Hiraku also joined into stomping the grapes. In the evening they had many barrels full of the crushed grapes, and the god of the worlds was being yelled at by the goddess of agriculture. The reason is the goddess was angry that he sent Hiraku into the forest of death, and also gifted him with a replica of the holy lance Grime. She was angry because the forest of death is far too dangerous for a normal human. Besides, if he didn't have such a healthy body, his weapon would have drained him all of his life energy. Followed the god of the worlds was punished by his daughter. The next day, Hiraku found another little vampire girl named Flora in the forest. It turned out that she is Lu's little sister. Arriving at the village, Flora learned that Hiraku is Lu's husband. She couldn't believe it first, because she thought Hiraku is a weak human, so Kuro threatened her for her disrespect towards Hiraku. 
Flora then apologized, and Hiraku found out that his dogs are actually wolves. In the evening, Flora discovered Hiraku's delicious food, and she learned many new things in his village. Flora liked the village, and she showed up a month later with an army of maids. The leader of the maidens was Anne, they belonged to the ogre breed, and they also had cows with them. Suddenly realizing that Tia had no peers, she also enlisted reinforcements, and by her return back to the village, she had brought three angel guardians to Hiraku's village. She also returned with a bunch of lizard men, who brought chickens. Hiraku was happy that they were normal chickens, otherwise he only encountered dangerous animals. In the days that followed, he saw the maids, and they took care of the household of Hiraku. They were professionals and completed all tasks very quickly, but their food was very tasteless. Following this, Hiraku taught the maids new delicious dishes. The maids learned quickly and were happy to have learned new cooking skills from Hiraku. Then we see the three angels of Tia. They ensured the safety of the village and regularly patrolled the forest. Then Hiraku looked after the lizard men who accelerated the construction work. The leader of the lizard men wore a red bandana around his arm because Hiraku couldn't tell them apart. Then Hiraku noticed that the population of his village has grown a lot since the beginning. Suddenly one of the elves appeared, and she showed him another group of elves she had found in the forest. In the evening, Hiraku wanted to choose a name for his village, and he brainstormed ideas with his friends. Zabuton gave Hiraku an idea, and he named it the Great Tree Village. Everyone loved the name of the village, and all the villagers wanted Hiraku as the mayor of their village. Then they started celebrating, and the Great Tree Village was officially established. In the next days Hiraku's village was officially established, and everyone settled into Hiraku's village. Suddenly an alarm went off, and an angel reported that a demon of the demon palace had arrived. Then Demon General Bezel introduced himself. Hiraku said that he is the mayor of the village Big Tree, and he got a bottle from Bezel that made Lu happy. However, Hiraku recalled that their village was built on the demon lord's land, and he was willing to pay taxes to the demon lord. Then Hiraku suggested to offer part of his harvest as a tax payment. He offered them 10% of their annually harvest. The contract was then concluded that Hiraku would give them 10% of the field crops annually, and Bezel teleported back to the demon palace. Followed then, Hiraku learned from Lu that his village is now under the protection of demons, and the normal tax burden is 50 to 60%. The girls were impressed by Hiraku for making such a good deal and praised him. Also Lu was delighted with the bottle, which was a powerful potion. Then we see the demon generals. They were happy that Hiraku is now an ally of the demons. Bezel reported that Hiraku had Vampire Lu and the powerful angel Tia as allies. He also had other strong allies who could wipe out an entire army. The demon generals feared Hiraku's village because they only had strong warriors and monsters. So Bezel was grateful that they agreed to a peaceful solution. Then they discovered the gift from Hiraku and they tasted the apples. Suddenly they noticed that Hiraku also had a demon spider on his side, who was a very dangerous monster. The next day, the giant dragon Drime appeared, and he brought a sword as a gift for Hiraku. Drime's servant told Hiraku that they are Hiraku's neighbors. Hiraku invited Drime to his village and he turned into a human. Drime was very shy, and Hiraku showed him his wine. Then Drime was drunk, and he liked Hiraku's village. He wanted to stay longer, but Drime's servant thanked him for the hospitality, and he dragged Drime back home. Then Hiraku had an idea. He wanted to build a new house for visitors. So Tia suggested to Hiraku that the elves would prefer to build a house for 30 people, since most of the visitors visiting in large groups. Then he planned a greeting for the visitors. Hiraku was aware that Grand Maria and the angels scared the guests. Also, the lizard men always got ready for a fight whenever the alarm was sounded. Followed the elves made another bell that made a different sound to signal visitors by Zabuton. Hiraku also formed a team to welcome the visitors. After that he asked Flora if she could help too, and she was assigned to security at night. The next day visitors of Howling Village were appeared. Garf said they want to establish a relationship with Hiraku's village. Lu welcomed her, and she noted that the groups aren't honest to them. Lu sensed other people of the group, and the Inferno Wolves captured the second group. Garf apologized, and promised not to mess around again. After that, Garf's group were greeted by the maids, and the men were happy to see so many pretty maids. Hiraku then wanted to bring them delicious food, but Tia said that Garf didn't bring a gift. Also, she wasn't sure if they were evil or good, because they hid another group in the forest. Lu only wanted to serve them normal dishes, and Hiraku learned that Kudel and the other angels noticed the second group, but they ignored them for being weak. 
So only ordinary food was served, and Hiraku wanted to serve them delicious food. But Maid Anne was averse to Hiraku's idea. Hiraku felt bad for the visitors, and Tia told them to be careful. Hiraku was happy to at least serve wine and wanted to find out if they had evil intentions towards his village. So Hiraku then asked them about Howling Village. He learned that it consists of five different settlements and most of the villagers are beastmen. Also Hiraku learned that they earn their money by hunting and mining. They had also traded with a human before village, but problems arose and they were looking for a new trading partner. That's how they discovered the village of Big Tree, and they were happy to have met Hiraku, who gave them delicious food to eat. Tia learned that the beastmen were hiding in two groups, as the second group was supposed to get help if something bad happened to the first group. This is how Hiraku learned that the beastmen are very nice guys. They then talked about solutions to exchange goods with each other, since they didn't have any currency yet. Beastman Garf said that to find their village is very difficult. As a result, Hiraku came up with the idea of using his dogs to transport their goods. Then Hiraku learned about various goods Howling Village was producing. Hiraku wanted their good, and he made a deal with Garf. They then said goodbye, and Garf apologized that they didn't bring a gift because they didn't know about the customs of other villages. Hiraku wasn't mad at him, and Garf said he would bring a gift next time. A few days later, the village of Big Tree got ready to make its first trade with Howling Village. Hiraku sent Tia and a group of lizardmen to trade with Howling Village. Drime offered to help Hiraku. He was a regular guest of Hiraku's village and always brought many gifts that the girls were enjoying. Then Tia and the lizardmen flew on Drime to Howling Village. The beastmen were scared at first, but Tia managed to gain their trust. Followed Drime was sad that the wine was sold too, and Hiraku wanted to reward Drime with wine as a reward. Tia then said that Howling Village would like some to send some people from their village to live there. Hiraku allowed them to live in his village, but he wanted at least two young men sent as a condition. In the days that followed, female beastmen were sent, and they were very nervous. Hiraku gained their trust and cheered them up. Then he met the little beastmen boys, and Hiraku realized Howling Village misunderstood his intention. In the followed days, the beastmen group moved into Hiraku's village, and they were very nervous. The girls were afraid of being treated badly. Followed then, they learned that the villagers are very nice. Lamulius later reported that they still hadn't gotten over their fear of Zabuton and his inferno wolves. Then more days passed, and Hiraku saw that Sina could use magic. Hiraku was jealous that he's the only one who can't use magic. Following Hiraku visited the villagers using magic to cultivate the plants, so we could see that all the villagers can using magic, and each one had a special element. Even his pets could cast powerful spells, and he was amazed. Then a slime also showed that he could use magic, and Hiraku was depressed. Sina tried to cheer Hiraku up, saying that the little boys couldn't use magic yet. After that, Hiraku was harvesting apples, but dangerous monsters caused an earthquake. Grand Maria told Hiraku that two strong monsters fighting and they are a danger to their village. Hiraku wanted to hunt down the two strong monsters, so Grand Maria flew with Hiraku to the giant bear and giant snake that were fighting. Hiraku defeated the two huge monsters with just his almighty farming tool. His inferno wolf Kuro was shocked by Hiraku's powers, and the other angels were also impressed by Hiraku. Following this, Hiraku used the bear meat to cook a stew with wine. The girls were sad that their wine was used in cooking. Hiraku learned that bear meat had a wild taste, but his fried serpent was very tasty. Everyone liked Hiraku's snake dish, because his dish fitted perfectly in their mouth. Later he asked Flora for a medicine, and she showed him various healing potions. Flora was able to help Hiraku, and he thanked for the help. Then he found out that their miso production wasn't going so well. Hiraku encouraged her not to give up. The next day, Hiraku collected chicken eggs and mixed various ingredients together. So Hiraku showed Flora how to make mayonnaise. Then the cooking lesson continued and Flora learned how to prepare miso. Flora was able to learn a lot from Hiraku and they managed to make kofi. When they were done, Hiraku was told they had visitors. Hiraku met a group of dwarves led by Donovan. They wanted wine from Hiraku but unfortunately, they had no money. So Donovan offered their technology. He wanted to help Hiraku make more and better alcohol. The girls were delighted with Donovan's proposal. Followed the dwarves then made different various of alcohol. As a result, Donovan produced whiskey, and Hiraku was surprised because the whiskey was very strong. So the dwarves moved into Hiraku's village too, and Hiraku threw a welcome party for the beastmen and dwarves. Drime loved Donovan's new liquor, and he was immediately drunk. Meanwhile, Donovan thanked Hiraku, and Hiraku wanted to have a man talk. He asked what type of women Donovan was into. He replied that they are all pretty, 
but he's more into older women with beards. In the days that followed, a dragon appeared again, and Hiraku was ready to slay the dragon. Suddenly, Drime attacked the dragon, and another dragon appeared. Hiraku charged with his lance and he just missed. He tried to attack again and he was stopped by Drime's servants. So Hiraku learned that it was Drime's daughter Lastis Moon and wife Grafaloon. Then Hiraku learned that Drime caused these problems, because he used to sneak away from home at night to party at Hiraku's village. They were jealous and thought that Drime was cheating on his wife. Hiraku was sympathetic to his family, and Drime was scolded by his daughter and wife. Afterwards, Drime's daughter and wife apologized to Hiraku for causing trouble. The misunderstanding was then cleared up, and Grafaloon understood how dangerous Hiraku is. Lastimun was also aware that without the demon spider saving her, she would have died from Hiraku's attack. Suddenly, Grafaloon wanted her daughter to live in the village of Hiraku. She should make sure that Big Tree Village never sees the dragons as enemies. Following this, Lasti was taken into the village Big Tree. Then Hiraku showed Lasti their chores in the village. So Hiraku learned that she was overpowered, and she was always destroying things unintentionally. As a result, Hiraku didn't know what job she was suited for. Then he noticed that everyone was scared because of Lasti's dragon aura. Later on, Lasti was in charge of the diplomatic relations of the village of Hiraku. Bielzu was shocked that there is now a dragon girl living in Hiraku's village. He was scared and wanted to buy fruit. Bielzu was afraid of Lasti and he bought everything because he didn't want to get into troubles. When Bielzu told the other demon generals about Lasti, he decided to send his daughter to Hiraku's village as well. She should investigate Big Tree Village and find out the fighting power of Hiraku's village. Followed, she used a spell to make herself invisible, and she was shocked that Hiraku had built a village in a forest full of dangerous monsters. Afterwards, she was received by Lasti, and she was amazed that a feared dragon lives in the village. However, Demon Florum explored the village alone, and she couldn't believe that the villagers were so many powerful warriors. So Florum saw only strong people everywhere. When she saw Hiraku's pets, she knew that Big Tree Village was stronger than every army in the world. She took notes and all she had to do was figure out who the mayor was. Suddenly she encountered Hiraku. She thought Hiraku was a normal human and ignored him. Florum later learned from Lasti that Hiraku is not a normal human, as he can even kill Lasti's parents with just one attack. In the days that followed, Florum settled into the village and became good friends with Lasti. In the days that followed, we see slimes in Hiraku's village. There were many kinds, and a small slime drank a whole barrel of wine. The girls were angry at him and wanted to punish him. So the little slime's process started and the girls said he is guilty. Suddenly Florum showed up and she stopped them. So the little slime was acquitted and he was allowed to party with the girls and drink alcohol from today. The slime was happy and enjoying life in Hiraku's village. Then we see Hiraku he had finished his work and his stomach was growling from the work. So he went to lunch with the girls. They cooked a vegetable hot pot and Hiraku wanted to eat seafood. He talked about his favorite dish, chanko, which is cooked with seafood and vegetables. Following this, Lu and her little sister searched for information. Meanwhile, the other girls were scared because in their world, the fish are huge monsters. They were shocked and couldn't believe that the dangerous monsters could be cooked into a delicious stew. Then they decided to visit a fish merchant in a town of the demon area near their village. Hiraku was surprised that the girls had a penchant for hot pots, so a team flew to the port city to get fresh seafood. Three days later, the group returned, and a manager of the Garun company accompanied the girls. Hiraku met the nice businessman Top G. Michael, and he showed him the fish his company caught. Then Hiraku asked if he could buy seaweed, and Michael wanted to take care of it immediately of his order. After that, Michael wanted to do business with Hiraku. Michael wanted to become their official government purveyor for their village. He said he would like to sell his fruits and vegetables to the outside world. Lou replied that many people were interested in their goods, so Michael showed the girls a list of his products. After that, Michael became the new business partner of Hiraku's village, and he also wanted to sell their alcohol, but Lasty intimidated him, and he was scared that he wanted to go home. Hiraku was happy to do business with Michael, and they look forward to working together in the future. Then we see Michael. He was happy he wasn't killed by the villagers of Big Tree Village. Followed we see the city of Shahado. Michael was in his office and his assistant said that unregistered people want to do business with him. Michael was the head of his company and very busy. He wanted to send them away, but his sixth sense said he would regret refusing their visit. Then Michael greeted their guests, and he recognized Florum immediately. Also, he met Lastis Moon, and he was scared as she is known as the crazy dragon Lastis Moon. Michael was aware that the two belonged to the most powerful families, 
and he looked at their goods. Then he saw the precious fruits of Hiraku, and he was ready to do business with them. So Michael said he can get them all the seafood, and the two were happy to trade with Michael. After that, he wanted to personally deliver the seafood, and he was scared that Big Tree Village is in the Forest of Death. Followed he also met the Dragon family. Arriving at Hiraku's village, he was scared to meet the strong villagers, but he learned that Hiraku is a nice guy. In the present, Michael couldn't believe he was getting the best deal of his life, but he was shaking and very exhausted from his visit to Big Tree Village. After that, Hiraku and his friends ate a great seafood chanko. The following day, a dragon appeared for the third time. Hiraku wondered if the dragon is a relative of Drime. Suddenly the dragon attacked his village and Hiraku was provoked. So he attacked the dragon with his almighty farming tool. The dragon was arrogant, and he hit the dragon that the dragon fell to the ground. So Hiraku managed to defeat the dragon. As a result the dragon girl said that she had lost and she gave up. Hiraku was angry and asked why she attacked the forest. Suddenly Drime appeared and he apologized to Hiraku. Drime explained to Hiraku that Hakurin is his older sister, so Hakurin said she was curious about her niece's future husband. This is how Hiraku learned that Drime was drunk and said that Lasty will one day be married to Hiraku. After that, Hakurin said that she wanted to test Hiraku's strength and she just wanted to play with him a bit. Hiraku then forced Hakurin to repair the destroyed forest. Then Hakurin got to know the village big tree and she also loved his village. So five days passed and Hakurin heard about the game Mahjong. The dragon family wanted to play Mahjong with a bet to make it more exciting. Lasty loved the idea too and Hiraku was forced to play strip Mahjong with them. They then played Mahjong together and the dragons were very good at the game. Hiraku learned that dragons don't like losing and he was almost naked. Hiraku was down to his boxer shorts and thought maybe the dragons were cheating. He realized it's absurd because they are very friendly and wouldn't cheat. Suddenly, Hiraku had a plan to win and he was sure to win now. Followed Hiraku lost to the dragons and the girls wanted to see Hiraku naked. After that, we see the demon generals, they learned that another dragon lives in the village of Hiraku. They were worried and the demon lord Galgardo wasn't even listening. He was wondering if his daughter was in her rebellious phase. A few days later, Hakurin decided to live in Big Tree's village, and she was very lazy and always doing nonsense. So Hiraku gave her the task of teaching the children reading, writing, and math. Hakurin liked her new job. After that we see Lamia girls, they asked Hiraku that he should help them. Hiraku didn't know what they were talking about, and he found out about his infernal wolf puppies. They discovered a dungeon, and they unwittingly scared the Lamia girls. Hiraku apologized, and Hiraku gave them his delicious fruit. After that, Hiraku offered to exchange goods with them, and they worked together from then on. However, Hiraku and the Lamia girls set up a delivery service for Hiraku's goods and their village, so Big Tree Village grew again. Meanwhile, the demon princess sent three demons to rescue Flaurum, thinking she was in danger. The following evening Flaurum was busy with the paperwork, and her father Bezel came to visit. Bezel reported that Princess Yuri was raising an army to prepare for an attack. Florum learned that three noble women led the army. Then Florum was shocked that the princess targeted Big Tree Village, even though they have so many strong warriors. Bezel tried to stop the attack, but the demon lord couldn't change his daughter's mind. So the two thought of a plan to stop the attack, and Florum learned that they want to attack tomorrow with 300 demon soldiers. The following day, the demon army wanted to invade Hiraku's village, but they were intimidated by the Lamia girls. The soldiers surrendered, and the three noble daughters were frightened too. Florum reported the incident to Hiraku, and Hiraku remarked that the three girls seemed scared. Florum said that they are the new workers in his village, and are helping them with the paperwork. Florum then promised that the three girls wouldn't do any nonsense in the future, otherwise the three girls will be personally punished by Florum. Then Hiraku asked, who is the fourth girl sitting on the throne? Florum replied that she is a friend of hers and was worried about Florum. Also, Florum said that she would like to work in Hiraku's village for a short time. Hiraku left the girls to Flaurum, and she told the four girls not to fool around anymore. However, Flaurum showed her friend Yuri the village big tree. She was fascinated by the water mills in Hiraku's village. Suddenly the beastmen boys appeared. She thought the kids were cute and played with them. After that, the girls were shown the apple trees, and Tia remarked that the three girls behaved like nobles. The girls said that taking over the village would make their kingdom rich, so Flaurum got angry. In the afternoon they met Lasty and Yuri thought Lasty is a really cute girl. The other girls, meanwhile, were planning to escape. 
At night, the girls tried to escape from the village, and they were afraid of Hiraku's pets. They failed to escape, and decided to stay in Hiraku's village. The next day Flaurum played with a cute puppy. Yura couldn't believe that Hiraku's puppy is a dangerous and strong inferno wolf. Florum said the little puppies are really cute and harmless, so Yura was allowed to play with the puppies too. That's how Yura learned about the beautiful village of Hiraku, and she was ashamed to have attacked such a great village. Florum then asked why she wanted to attack Hiraku's village. Yura replied that she was worried about Florum because she just suddenly disappeared from the demon palace. Then there was dinner and the girls were also slowly settling into the village of Big Tree and learned Hiraku is a nice major. Suddenly, Hiraku found out that his wife Lu can't control her magic at the moment, and she said that he doesn't have to worry. In the following days, Yura wanted to help the little boys with the farm work, and they were happy to harvest the vegetables with Yura. So they spent the beautiful day peacefully together, and the little beastmen boys liked her a lot. Later Yura was picked up and the boys were sad. Also Sina gave Yura apples as a gift. Then she wanted to go back to the demon palace, but the three noble girls wanted to stay in Hiraku's village. They loved eating Hiraku's dishes, and the princess teleports back to the demon palace with Bezel. Then a few months passed, and soon was winter fell on. The village of Big Tree was harvesting a lot of vegetables, and Lasty wanted to send her parents some vegetables. Hakurin also wanted to give her parents vegetables, and Hiraku learned more about the family tree of the dragons. They had very powerful family, and Lasty brought the harvested vegetables to their parents. On the way, she also helped Michael to fight against a fish monster, and brought meat to Hiraku to cook hot pot. Hakurin also brought her parents vegetables, and she brought a group of dark elves to Big Tree Village. Ya was the leader of them, and Hiraku learned of their abilities. Hiraku then devised a place to sleep for them, and welcomed the dark elves to his village. The next day, the girls didn't want to be a burden to Hiraku, and they tried to hunt down their own food. The monsters were way too strong, and Hiraku said she doesn't have to help them hunt monsters. However, Ya learned from the pottery that he wanted to create. Hiraku couldn't make pottery, and Ya wanted to help him. After that, she made perfect pottery. Later the Tia elves reported that they had discovered a new dungeon, and the Inferno wolves were excited to go with them. Meanwhile, Hiraku was in the men's bath, he had built a second bathhouse for the men. Suddenly, the beastmen boys jumped into the bathroom, and outside the three classy girls planned to watch Hiraku take a bath. They wanted to see the Rizmaster naked, and were punished by Flowerim. In the evening the elves returned, and they reported to seeing a bloody viper inside the dungeon. Ya said their meat is very valuable to elves as they amplify a man's riz to make children. Months passed, and winter came again. Hiraku was worried about wife Lu. She had been ill for a long time, and Lu said that he didn't need to worry. Suddenly Sina noticed that Lu likes to eat sour food lately. Followed Hiraku learned that his wife Lu is pregnant and the Riz farmer is expecting a child soon with his vampire baby mama. In the following months, everyone enjoys the nice weather while working on the fields. Hiraku started his day with stretching exercises. Then his pregnant wife Lu showed up, and Hiraku was constantly worried about her since Lu got pregnant. The reason is Hiraku was still overwhelmed that Lu would be his future baby mama, and he was looking forward to their baby together. Followed we see the maids preparing breakfast. Hiraku is an early riser, but the maids always feel obliged to get up earlier than the master of the house. So Hiraku decided to sleep longer, because he got worried about the maids. After that, Hiraku learned that the wine slime drank a barrel again, and breakfast was also prepared. At breakfast, Hiraku heard that Flora haven't slept well, as her experiment was a failure. While everyone is having breakfast, an angel reported to Hiraku that Kuro defeated all the monsters who attacked their village. After eating, he went to see his cute pets and his plants. He noticed that his field was being attacked by garden pests. Hiraku could easily make them disappear with his almighty farming tool. After that, Hiraku admired his delicious vegetables and went on to look after his village. Then we see everyone eating lunch. Hiraku got the idea to introduce lunch, and everyone loved his idea. At first they were scared of his, because they all lived very poor, and they didn't got enough food in their previous life to eat more than one time a day. So they were very happy with Hiraku's decision. After that, Hiraku went back to work, and his pups snuggled up to him. Then Hiraku planted beautiful flowers, and he also made toys for the children. Then he had also made wooden swords for the maids and lizardsmen. They were obsessed with their workout, because the girls didn't want to get fat to keep wearing their cute maid dresses. Then Hiraku tried workout too, so he was instantly tired by his workout. 
Suddenly a girl showed him some skills, and he used his almighty farming tool, and destroyed the tree trunk. In the afternoon, he was served a new dish, and Hiraku remarked that it looks weird. Maid Anne said that they didn't want to waste food. So Hiraku tried the dish, and it tasted way too sweet. Hiraku didn't like the taste, but the dragon girl's lastie and her aunt liked the new dish. After that, Hiraku received a letter from demon princess Yuri. She said that she loved Zabutan's created fashion clothes. When Hiraku finished eating, he went to the bathhouse to relax. He was happy to have built a bathhouse for men, because he felt every time awkward to bath with all the girls. So he enjoys the time while bathing. When he finished bathing, he was watched by the elves. The girls followed him, and Hiraku could feel their eyes watching him. Hiraku knew they were only concerned for Hiraku's safety, and he was grateful for his second life with his new friends. The next morning, Hiraku wanted to visit the dwarves. They were busy making alcohol, and Donovan was a very hard-working man. He took his work very seriously, and Hiraku was always impressed with his home-brewed liquor. Then Donovan asked if he could plant more grapes, so Hiraku went devising a plan to expand their field. Suddenly Sina appeared. She discovered a strange man in their village. Hiraku was startled because the unknown man managed to sneak into their village and no one has noticed. Lu knew the man. He was the progenitor of vampires. Hiraku met Vargreif, and he congratulated Lu on her pregnancy. After that, Hiraku learned that he is Lu's grandfather and he has been alive for 4,000 years. Also, Vargreif said that he deletes his memories regularly so he doesn't get bored with his life. He then apologized for invading his village, but was drawn to the presence of his god statue. However, Hiraku learned that he once met God when he was born again. Vargreif was also given a second life like Hiraku, and he simply became a vampire. Then he said that he tried to create a statue of the god, but he never managed to create a perfect statue. Followed Hiraku noted that Vargreif wanted his statue. Hiraku couldn't give it up, and Vargreif sulked, so Hiraku offered to create another statue. However, Hiraku gave Lu's grandpa a statue, and he was very grateful for his gift. He was glad to have met a good guy like Hiraku, and made his way to a church. So Vargreif visited his established church, and he was greeted by an old friend. Then he told about his new statue, and he wanted to set up the god statue immediately. The priest wanted to thank Hiraku for the statue, and they decided to give Hiraku a piano as a present. After that, we see Hiraku sneezing, and his wife Lu playing the new piano. However, they decided to put the piano was in the dormitory, and the three demon noble girls wanted to play music on the expensive piano too. They then went to the piano, but they didn't dare because they were afraid of breaking it. So they asked Hiraku if he could buy a cheaper piano to practice with. Hiraku didn't know why, but he ordered a second piano. In the days that followed, the girls all played the piano, and they enjoyed spending time together. The girls played every day, and Hiraku hoped they would stop playing the piano at night. Then spring passed, and the weather got very hot, so Hiraku harvested the fresh vegetables on his fields. When Hiraku tended to his plants, his wife Lu brought him and the girls lunch. So Hiraku took a lunch break, and Lu conjured up ice cubes for his drink. The summer days were very hot, and Hiraku was worried about his baby mama. Lu said that she is fine, because everyone takes good care of her since she is pregnant. Hiraku also learned that the maidens have attended many births. In the evening the other girls wanted to talk about the baby, and they were already looking forward to the birth of Lu's baby. Then Lu said she is sad, because she can drink alcohol during her pregnancy. As a result, all the girls decided to give up alcohol until the baby is born. They asked Hiraku to sell all of their alcohol as they find it mean to drink alcohol without their loo. So Hiraku told that they can also let the wine continue to age so that they taste better. In the days that followed, the dwarves were sad, thinking that the girls didn't like their alcohol. Hiraku explained the misunderstanding to them, and they were cheered up. So Donovan got back to his work. A few weeks later, it was very hot in the village big tree, and everyone was enjoying the nice weather. Meanwhile, Hiraku checked on his baby mama, and Lu said everything is fine like every day. Hiraku then learned that Tia and the angels gave her the beautiful ice flower that can cool her down. Suddenly, a dark elf appeared. She wanted to bring Lu a gift. Lu was happy about the gift and thanked her. After that, more villagers showed up, and Lu got many gifts. Everyone wanted to give Lu something, and they overdo it with the gifts. In the evening, Hiraku and Lu looked at their many gifts, and they were very happy to have such nice friends. Then Hiraku spotted a hammer, and Lu suddenly felt dizzy. Hiraku's baby wanted to see the world to play with the pretty girls. They then prepared for the birth of Hiraku's baby, and he waited in the house. Hiraku hoped his baby would be born healthy, and he visited his favorite spot of his village. 
Hiraku fell asleep under the tree, and when morning came, he went to Lu immediately. Hiraku then learned that Lu had given birth to a healthy baby boy. Hiraku was allowed to carry his baby boy in his arms, and he loved him. Then Hiraku looked at his baby, and he couldn't believe he had become a father now. Lu and Hiraku became parents, and they looked forward to their time together as a family. Then the first week passed since his son was born, and they named their son Alfred. Alfred got the almighty Riz power, and everyone was in love with baby Alfred. After that, Hiraku looked at his plants and he remembered the good times. So we see the time Hiraku started with his second life until now, with all his happy memories with his friends. Hiraku decided to give something back to the villagers for the great support during Lu's pregnancy. However, Hiraku made coins and wanted to give everyone coins as a reward. Hiraku said that they can use the money to buy goods, and they don't always have to ask Hiraku for permission anymore. All the villagers agreed with Hiraku's idea, but they still had to consider the value of all the goods. Hiraku wanted to introduce a real currency later, and he wanted to do a trial run with the actual coins. In the days that followed, Hiraku distributed the self-created coins to the villagers. Followed we see Hiraku diligently produce them. Then the villagers exchanged the coins for goods. Everyone was enjoying to buy their own stuff. After the coins were introduced, many had special requests, and Hiraku made the toys for all of them. A few days later, a little girl showed up, and she wanted to use the coin for buying a baby. Hiraku refused as it's impossible, so he offered to play with her and the other kids instead. Then the night fell on, and Hiraku had a party with the villagers. They celebrated the birth of his son, and the girls were happy to finally be able to drink alcohol again. Everyone was in a good mood, and Flora celebrated with her nephew Alfred. Then Hiraku wondered why baby Mama Lu was holding a hammer. Suddenly Donovan brought a huge cask full of wine. They produced an exclusive wine to congratulate Hiraku and Lu's baby. Then they opened the wine barrel together, and everyone celebrated together. Afterwards Hiraku and Lu were very happy to celebrate with their friends in their village. After that, Hiraku said that everyone has to drink a lot today. As a result, everyone drank a lot of wine. After a short time, almost everyone was drunk and dancing at the party. Meanwhile, Lu and Hiraku were chatting with Donovan. Lou said that she isn't allowed to drink wine at the moment, because she still has to breastfeed their baby boy Alfred. As a result, Donovan decided to save her a bottle of wine. Hiraku and Lou were looking forward to the future with their son. Meanwhile, the drunk Flora said that Alfred is the best nephew in the world. Then we see the demon palace, and the demon general have already found out about Hiraku's baby. They knew about the riz power of Hiraku's baby Alfred. So the general suggested that one day Princess Yuri should marry Alfred. The next day they all work together again in the village, and Hiraku is enjoying the nice weather. Suddenly, Tia told him that the angels found people in need again. The girls wanted to allow them to move into the village big tree, so they suggested to build a second village, and they were looking forward to expanding the village big tree with Hiraku.